There are many different alien races in pop culture. Some are a hive mind like the Flood from Halo. Others are terrifying cosmic gods like a lot of the aliens from the works of H.P. Lovecraft. And a few alien races are even made out of pure energy. But the alien races that people tend to talk about the most are just humans with superpowers and better technology. Yeah, people may say they want more originality in stories, but uh, their actions clearly show the opposite. The most well-known of all of these races and the one that started this trend are of course the Kryptonians. But this video isn't about them. Instead, I'll be going over the two most popular races that were inspired by the Kryptonians, the Saiyans and the Viltrumites. If these two planet-conquering races went to war with one another, who would win? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Now, of course, if the entire Viltrum Empire went up against Super Saiyan God Goku or Vegeta, yeah, they would get their ass kicked. So in this video, I will be putting the Viltrum Empire before the Scourge virus wiped most of them out up against the Saiyans right before Planet Vegeta was destroyed. So the Saiyans will have heavy hitters on their team like Vegeta, but not Goku. <laughs> And the Viltrumites will of course have Omni-Man, but not Invincible. What? Now at first I thought this debate was pretty cut and dry. I mean, after all, Goku was a weak Saiyan, and he was sent to conquer Earth. While Omni-Man is an elite Viltrumite, and he was sent to conquer Earth. I mean, if a weakling of a race was given the same mission as the elite of another race, uh, it's pretty clear which is the stronger race. But after thinking it over, I realized I was being a bit of a Saiyan supremacist. I mean, after all, the Earth that Goku was sent to take over and the Earth that Omni-Man was sent to take over are two different Earths. But Roshi in his buff form could blow up the moon and uh, <laughs> none of the heroes in Invincible could do anything close to that. But after watching a few power scaling videos going over the Invincible verse, I realized that a war between the Saiyans and the Kryptonians would be a lot closer than I once thought. So let's go over their powers and abilities. Their strength, durability, and attack potency. Their travel speed and movement speed. And of course, their population. Now, because both the Viltrumites and the Saiyans are based off the Kryptonians, they share a lot of the same powers. Both of them can fly, and of course they have super strength and super speed. But surprisingly, that's where the similarities end. Viltrumites can hold their breath for much greater periods of time. While they can't exactly regrow limbs, Viltrumites heal much faster than Saiyans. And of course, Viltrumites can live for thousands of years, which means they have a lot of fighting experience and resistance to aging hacks. Yeah, I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for saying this, but I think just based on how long they live, the average Viltrumite has more fighting skill than the average Saiyan. Keep in mind, not every Saiyan is Goku. As for the Saiyans, they can of course use key attacks, whether it's to fire balls of energy or a big beam of energy. They also have something known as a Zen Kai boost. Basically, whenever a Saiyan is beaten to near death and recovers, they get a massive boost of energy. Their power level is increased, usually by a quarter or one third. But most importantly of all, whenever a Saiyan looks at a full moon, they transform into their Ozaru form, which increases their power by tenfold. So in terms of powers and abilities, yeah, the Saiyans take this one. But what about strength, attack potency, and durability? Everyone loves to point to that one panel where Goku failed to lift 40 tons. But keep in mind, writers aren't physicists. Toriyama just wrote down 40 tons because, well, it sounded like a lot to him. The pyramid that Piccolo levitated was a lot more than 40 tons. And if you only want to focus on manga-only feats, Final Form Frieza once levitated an entire mountain and threw it at Goku. But in the Invincible cartoon, Omni-Man stated that he redirected a meteor the size of Texas. Now granted, this is just a statement. We didn't actually see him do it. And he only says this in the cartoon, not in the original comic. But in both the cartoon and the comics, we've seen Viltrumites lift heavy objects multiple times. Three of them even smashed through a planet at one point. And just because Final Form Frieza can levitate a small mountain, it doesn't mean the average Saiyan can do the same. I mean, after all, First Form Frieza wiped out the entire Saiyan race. 
Well, the entire Saiyan race minus six if we include the Broly movie. Oh wait, I forgot about Vegeta's younger brother, uh, make that seven. But strength isn't the only thing that matters in a fight. As Rocky Balboa said, it doesn't matter how hard you hit, it matters how much you can get hit, how much you can kick, and keep on going. That's how winning is done! In other words, now we're gonna go over durability. Now a lot of people put the durability of the average Viltrumite at planet level. And I do understand where those people are coming from. I mean, that planetary explosion was from a planet that was even bigger than Earth. But keep in mind, those three Viltrumites that pulled off that feat were in the top 10 of the entire Viltrumite race. And even the old Viltrumite guy himself stated, Stay close! We have to time this perfectly and reach the planet all at the same time! If the core has time to stabilize, we could all die on impact. So yeah, even elite Viltrumite warriors do not have planet level durability. But Raditz, a first class Saiyan warrior, was able to block a moon busting attack. And Vegeta, who's a super elite Saiyan warrior, survived getting hit by Goku's Kamehameha wave. And that Kamehameha wave just canceled out Vegeta's Gallic Gun, which was stated to have enough destructive energy to destroy the Earth. So yeah, the average Viltrumite may be able to to bench press more, but the average Saiyan can take much more of a beating. As for attack potency, well, Piccolo can completely vaporize the moon with a single key blast. Some people have even calculated this feat to being dwarf planet level. And Piccolo did this in weighted clothing. Raditz is way stronger than Piccolo even without the weights on. Now as for some- <coughs> 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 Fuck it, I'm leaving that in the video. It's stated in one of the Dragon Ball handbooks that it takes a power level of at least 10,000 to destroy a planet, and Vegeta's power level is nearly twice that. It took three of some of the top Viltrumites to destroy a planet a little bit bigger than Earth, and even then they needed help from the Space Racer in order to pull it off. And in the Dragon Ball Z anime, King Vegeta was able to destroy three planets all by himself. And some people have even calculated Vegeta's Gallic Gun to being Dwarf Star level. So that's another point for the Saiyans, but now it's time that we move on to speed. In the original Dragon Ball anime, as a weak Saiyan child, Goku was able to dodge a bolt of lightning. Hell, some people even say that Goku was faster than light around this time, because he put on a pair of sunglasses to block the, uh, solar flash. Yeah, I don't really agree with this feat, but power scaling is subjective, so you can include this feat if you want. Now Piccolo only stated that Raditz was faster than the speed of light in the English dub, but with how fast Piccolo's key blast reached the moon, and with how fast the explosion was seen from Earth, yeah, it does make sense that Raditz was faster than light around this time. So you could make the argument that the average Saiyan is dozens, if not hundreds of times faster than light, but Viltrumites are many many times faster than that. Everyone's favorite character from Invincible, Alan the Alien, flew from outside of the solar system to Earth in under 12 minutes. Yeah, that would make him over 60,000 times faster than light. And keep in mind, around this time, he was weaker than the average Viltrumite. While it is easier to move super fast in a vacuum over moving super fast in an atmosphere, the speed difference between Viltrumites and Saiyans is just far too great. And before you bring up combat speed, Speed, Viltrumites constantly fight at the speed they're flying. Now granted, Kami's ship was able to go from Earth to Jupiter in about one second, and the Saiyan space pods are about six times faster than Kami's ship. But unfortunately, that's not how fast Saiyans are moving. That's how fast their ships are moving. And you can't make the argument that Goku is faster than one of these ships until after the Saiyan saga, when he's several times more powerful than Vegeta. So in terms of speed, Viltrumites take the win. But there is still one more factor to go over for an all-out war between the Viltrumites and the Saiyans. Population. And I'm gonna be honest here everyone, this last factor completely gives the Viltrumites the victory. Before Frieza destroyed planet Vegeta, there were thousands of Saiyans on the planet. Even if you want to highball this to 999,000 Saiyans, the Viltrumites would still outnumber them over a billion to one. When the Scourge virus wiped out most of the Viltrumite population, their dead bodies made a Saturn-like ring around their planet. And this ring has been calculated to be made up of over 10 quadrants quadrillion bodies. Even if a Viltrumite hurts themselves when they attack a Saiyan, can a Saiyan even as powerful as Vegeta take on a billion of them all at once? And the Saiyan's Azaru form would just make them a bigger target. 
The average Saiyan may be hundreds if not thousands of times more powerful than the average Viltramite. But there's just too many Viltramites. And let's not forget about the super strong weapons that the Viltramites sometimes use. The Saiyans would put up a good fight, but in the end, the Viltramites would win. I win! In your face, Milkin! Woo! Hey guys, I just want you all to know that I had a lot of fun making this video. And I want to give a shout out to Lunk's Takes video on Could Goku Stop a Viltramite Invasion? I'll link it down below, please go check it out. A lot of the research I used in this video was from his video. On my main channel, my full review of Velma should be released on February 9th. If you disagreed with anything I said in my video, please leave your thoughts in the comments section down below, and I'll try to correct any mistakes I made in the pinned comment. My next video on this channel will be about if Guts could survive in the world of Attack on Titan. I hope you guys check it out.